During the monsoon high tides, the courtyards of homes are flooded. Shikha wades through the water to take me to the water's edge of her village. Shikha shows me the filth carried into her village by the sea waters. She pointed to the remains of her old house that had been washed away by the river. Nowhere to go, her family built another house beside the embankment. Sadly, even that house was washed away by the river. As I admired the greenery and ponds, I was suddenly shocked to see the rupture in the clay walls. These cracks showed me how fragile the delta was. Then, I went to meet Uttara in another village nearby. She took me to the embankment past a large earth mover that had been brought to rebuild the embankment. Due to the heavy monsoons, it lay idle in the waterlogged land. At the embankment, Uttara showed me the spot through which the sea water had gushed in. She said that the embankment, which was once a protector, had now become a problem. It is an impediment now as it stops the water from flowing out of the flooded agricultural fields. Next, Uttara took me to her hut where there was a small fishing boat. She told me that apart from using the boat for fishing, they kept it there as a transport for a quick getaway. When the floodwaters rise and enter their home, then the boat becomes their only refuge. She packs the boat with food and the family has lived in it for even as long as a week. After Narayanganj, on the way to Moshuni, I met a couple fishing in the river. When they come into the river for fishing, they stay in the boat only for a day, she told me. She said that they always went back home before sundown. I asked the man, did it help having his wife beside him while fishing? He said yes because she does the minute things of sorting through the catch and so on. And what about the children? How do they manage if she spends her day with him in the boat? He said that his son manages somehow and that his daughter is now married. This is the end, southern end of the village. What has happened as a result of the saltwater incursion into the village is horrible. And here you are seeing one of the examples of it. Before saline water got into the village, this used to be a freshwater pond. Children used to jump in it, swim in it, play in it, and women used to collect household water from here. This was also their social meeting point, a place where women gathered. And today, you see this horrible sight. This is pure salt water, salt from the sea in a freshwater pond. Thinking about the villages, who pays the 
maximum price. It's women in these villages who pay the maximum price of the changes that happen after an embankment is breached. One of the victims of the breached embankment was Ahida. I watched in amazement as she trudged through the water to fetch a pitcher of fresh water. most importantly all water sources in the village they become saline and women whose responsibility is to collect water they then have to trudge to the nearest tube well, which can be as much as 10 minutes away. A fair distance, they have to walk to collect 10 to 20 buckets of water every day for washing and cleaning, for drinking, and for washing the utensils. So the entire households depend on the supply of sweet water or fresh water that is brought by women. In a way, women are paying the maximum price for climate change that's affecting Sundabans. In Sundarban, the biggest difference today is between the haves and the have-nots. People who have a little bit of money, they are trying to adjust. They are trying to adjust with the terrible situation that's facing them. But people like Bhabani, who have nothing left to them, how do they survive? They survive on water's edge, literally and figuratively. Here, you're seeing Bhabani's house. This is the way she has been living for three years. It's a house made of bamboo and polythene sheets and built on stilts. Is this a way to live? Where will she go? The next destination is out of Shundarbon. Leave Shundarbon and go to a city to work as a daily wage laborer or a domestic help. Climate change is a global phenomenon and as yet scientists are not really sure how it will affect whom and where. In the Shundabans, the effects of a changing climate are already being experienced by women in remote villages. In places where women are struggling every day to maintain the well-being of themselves and their families. Yet, as we could see, the effects of a changing climate are not entirely destroying women of the Sundarbans. They remain indomitable in their spirit to survive, to fight back, and to keep the families going. Oh, no, 